Well, Alvise, uh, I'm fully aware of your great expertise in the field of anti-illicit trade. And actually this great expertise gives you this luxury of having, I would say, an overview of recent problems, trends, and potential solutions to counter this issue. So I'd be very grateful if in the context of um, illegal trade in environmental goods, you could spend the last seven minutes of today's panel discussing some opportunities that dig digitization could offer us uh, to counter this threat. No, I'm unmuted. So thank you, Piotr, uh, for the kind words. I, I think you overstated uh, my capabilities and expertise. Uh, but let me um, say, say a few words. Uh, uh, a lot of things have already been said. A lot of examples have been given, solutions have been given, um, and there's a lot more to say. I would, I'd like to make a couple of points. One is on technology, one is on uh, digitalization and so on. And the other one is uh, on another point which has been mentioned uh, throughout this uh, webinar. It is on uh, um, cooperation, public-private partnership, uh, that uh, the problem is uh, very complex. The problem is uh, uh, cross-border and therefore it calls for a comprehensive solution and there's not one single act that can, can intervene. And, and, and I think Crawford was mentioning that for enforcement it's impossible to to tackle that kind of volume of illicit products on the net. Uh, so you need a cooperation also from other stakeholders, maybe e-commerce platforms, uh, just to mention one. <clears throat> so th that said, uh, um, uh, one point I also would raise, I find it extremely sad to see how organized crime was behind uh, smuggling and uh, corruption and so on, is taking advantage of the crisis that humanity is going through right now with a pandemic, with full disregard of, uh, of life and uh, of the misery of many people and taking advantage uh, of the situation and, uh, and uh, selling and um, online and different means, uh, counterfeited uh, uh, PPE equipment or contrabanded PPE equipment. And there's already, um, examples of how they are getting ready to take a, advantage uh, of the vaccines uh, with diverting uh, vaccines uh, or arbitrage and pricing and, and counterfeiting uh, vaccines. So it is pretty sad to say that. If anything, this uh, hopefully has raised the attention on, um, of these, uh, on the issue of uh, contraband smuggling and counterfeited products, uh, because as we know, <clears throat> The, the, the organized crimes uh, don't focus on one specific uh, uh, product, but they will focus on uh, many different ones, uh, any, anyone that can make money. And uh, since they have uh, channels and transportation means and so on, they can transport uh, wildlife uh, or they can transport drugs or vaccines or whatever. So that, that thing is so to have raised the attention, I think, I think is, an, is, a, is an important point. Uh, so that, that said, coming to, um, I, I do think that what we see specifically in the industry, which I am uh, clearly more focused on, which is the one on tobacco, is that uh, uh, technology can help. I'm a strong believer that technology can help. Uh, one of the reasons is uh, what Sophie mentioned is that it creates uh, uh, more transparency uh, by and large. Uh, and uh, I do think that uh, corruption can go on between two people is more difficult to go on between mach two machines, uh, just to make that as, as, a, as a stupid example. But I, I do think technology can, can help. And while the jury is still out there because uh, smugglers and criminal organization can also take advantage of technology, I'm a strong believer it's helping. That's what we see in our industry, being at uh, machine learning. There's a lot of data there. So you need to have that kind of a <clears throat> means to analyze trends and patterns. Uh, but also in, uh, in track and tracing, uh, which um, in our industry, there's been a uh, European law that uh, mandated track and tracing for every single pack of uh, cigarettes uh, and tobacco products throughout Europe. Uh, and that came into force uh, around two years ago. It's a massive undertaking. It is, uh, um, I think the biggest uh, track and tracing worldwide uh, that I know of, uh, covering uh, 28 member states uh, and down to the 
point of sale and down to the single SKU, the single pack of cigarettes. So that the, the volume of, of a product track is really massive. I think there's a lot of learning to, to, to get from this and they can be replicated in other products. Um, clearly it's not a, the, a silver bullet, but if I look at the trends of illicit trade of cigarettes in Europe in the last couple of years, they're coming down. And I, I do think it's also part, part to that one. So technology can help. The last point I want to make uh, to stay in the time, I think I have still a couple of minutes, is uh, that to fight a network and organized crimes are networks across countries and across uh, jurisdictions and so on, you need a network, uh, a partnership. You need a public-private partnership. Different, uh, different actors from the private sector, public sector, NGOs, each one for his own expertise, competences and, and, and part. And uh, can contribute, but you need to you need to this this uh, this kind of uh, network and partnership. For that, uh, we in Philip Morris uh, launched uh, an initiative back in 2016, which we called PMI Impact, that is pledging 100 million dollars to finance projects uh, of exactly these sectors. Uh, so, uh, financing uh, projects uh, and giving grants to public sector, to private sector, NGOs, universities, and you name it. Uh, in order to fight illicit trade, and not specifically illicit trade of tobacco, but illicit trade uh, in all the spectrums, for the reason I just mentioned, that uh, we do see uh, that uh, um, organized crime is not in silos, but it's really across a different. Uh, so it's better to have uh, all these sectors fighting uh, organized crime uh, in, a, in, a, in a comprehensive manner. And, and, and these. Uh, this, uh, these grants we're giving is to fight illicit trade and corruption, because we do see that corruption is clearly the mother of all evils uh, and, and foster these kind of uh, bad habits. So far, we have sponsored uh, uh, 60 grantees across uh, 30 countries, uh, um, investing around uh, half of the budget that we allocated, which is around $50 million. So there's still, we hope we'll, we'll continue for the next uh, years, another, I think, another five years. Uh, and grant uh, uh, more project. I have the pleasure to see that one of the grantees is here today is the Basel Institute uh, um, fighting wildlife uh, um, trafficking. So that's, I think, is, is, is something which we in the company believe a lot and we have, uh, we have launched this, uh, this, this initiative. I'll stop it there because I think we're running out of time. <laughs>